we wanted to give you a few moments um, of, from our thoughts about practical helps for women and children during this time. We realize it's an unprecedented, unprecedented time and we are in our homes with our children. And so we just would like to talk about some practical things that we can do with children and moms. So at least I want to ask you first, tell me some things about staying in the Word and how you, you're growing and thriving during this time. So what I love about reading the One Year Bible is God in His providence has already gone before us on what He has prepared for that day. So today I was reading Psalm 90 and it talks about how our days are just a hand breath and I make the most of our time and establish the work of our hands. And then the next part was Esther, which for me, you know, Esther's a big thing for all our women in our sphere of influence. And there it was. And there are 365 days in a year, but he had taken me to that passage and then back to Exodus on, he gives us a skill. So the practical part of that is spiritually he prepares us. He gives us everything we need for life and godliness in the moment. As we're thinking ahead, there's two thoughts. Number one, we have prayer partners. We're, we're alone, but we have prayer partners in the Holy Spirit and Jesus. They're always interceding for us. They're with us. We have promises in, you know, in Ephesians and in Hebrews that they are right now praying for us and with us and showing us how to pray. So as we pray for our children and what to say to them, it hit me. We are the ones that get to translate this for them. So what do you say about that? Where I am in this season as an empty nester, I, I love snapshots. So I can look back at 9-11, how I was framing it for them. And now I look now and see God's redemptive hand through 20 years of history in my family and everything that I didn't frame in the sovereignty of God then, I get to do now. So. I love redemption, and I see that for me. How about you? Same, I see the same thing. Being able to give children big picture, teenagers who are, they're missing their friends. Um, I mean, every phase and stage, yes, that's true. But translating this, that there's a very big God who, who controls absolutely every breath, every hand that touches every person. I think one of the promises that I love so much is in, for this time right now, in Psalm 118.7 in the New American Standard, and it says, the Lord is for me among those who help me. And he's, he is, those who help me could be a nurse or a doctor helping one of our loved ones who's sick. It could be um, the teacher who's on the webcast telling us what to do. The Lord is for me. And so I think that's really been one of my biggest thoughts during this time. You know, I look back over the spans of time and see His faithfulness and seeing how He was there then, He's here now, and it gives me much more of a peace in Him to know that He has this. He is sovereign and He is good and nothing escapes His loving hand. That's encouraging. It is encouraging. Okay, so what about just the messy and the, the mad and the anger and the, <laughs> I've had it, I'm not doing this well. What about that? Well, that's why we have First John 1, 9, <laughs> to confess our sin. But it is a reality of, of the frustration that so many things in my flesh, I mean, I had a feeling they were there, I sort of had glimpses of them, are now coming up and I see that as no condemnation for those who are in Christ, but this is information for intercession on where God is sanctifying His people. And then fight the right enemy. It's it's the world, it's the flesh, it's the devil, but it's not that person. Well, it's driving you nuts. It's a valid point. <laughs> They're not in that list. And I've had to stop and remember that. That's a great point. <laughs> <laughs> and to show an attitude of gratitude in everything and i think honestly when we're when we're through this there's going to be a new um sensitivity power fruitfulness to everything that really matters that is interesting to see what all he's pruning he has pruned our time 
He has pruned our activities. He has pruned our choices. I mean, everything is limited and taken away and it, it just flushes out what's really important and what is important in our relationships with Him and with others. And I find myself just getting rid of things, have too much, and just bring it. Get it, get it all together, what really matters. But what I see right now, I see um, Sunday school teachers are reaching out to their children. In our church, these, these teachers are checking on kids one by one. Um, our Bible study leaders, same. I know you have stories seeing that happening. I am very encouraged of what I'm seeing in the body of Christ and in the Church of the Apostles, of a community coming together and really reaching their neighborhoods. And uh, like you said, they're the people that they are in community with uh, geographically and in their schools. I think it's exciting because I think we had more in place than we thought and people are far more belonging to Jesus and belonging together than we realized. That's encouraging. It's been phenomenal to me to see that reaching the lost and equipping the saints for the work of ministry is truly happening. I mean, it's, it's like years, years of being together, but years of partaking together, it's, it's happening right now. We see it. We were given a test and it's good to see what the pop quiz has revealed. I think that we should be grateful for the years of, of planting that we have. Thank you so much for joining us today. I hope this was helpful to you and I really hope we see each other soon. Take care.